Well, dispensationalists are wrong again. Dispensationalists have written entire books about the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, even though they're exactly the same thing and are used interchangeably throughout the Bible. The only difference is that the kingdom of God appears 68 times in 10 different New Testament books, but the kingdom of heaven appears 32 times in only one gospel, and that's the gospel of Matthew. So this tells us that Matthew was peculiar about his use of language. He preferred the term, the kingdom of heaven, instead of the kingdom of God, which every other New Testament writer used. It's the same exact thing, just different verbiage. And one of the reasons that they make this claim is that it fits into their dispensational theology about the end times, about eschatology and the place of the Jews and Israel in the end times. So they have to take these scriptures and, and twist them around to fit them to their theology. And the dispensationalist claim has something to do with that the kingdom of God is spiritual and inside of you, and the kingdom of heaven is the literal political kingdom of God that's gonna come to earth. But again, the Bible uses these phrases interchangeably. It's only Matthew, the apostle Matthew, that uses uh, the phrase, the kingdom of heaven. But all you have to do, we don't have to get into all what they believe. I'm not going to spend hours researching this nonsense that dispensationalists believe because it's completely false teaching and it can so easily be disproven by simply comparing in the Bible where the kingdom of God appears versus where the kingdom of heaven appears. So I've jotted down some Bible verses and let's just take a look. And this is really easy to refute. All you have to do is just look up some instances of the kingdom of heaven versus the kingdom of God. So I've got some here. And let's just begin with Matthew 11, 11. It says, Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than than he. So Matthew, again, uses kingdom of heaven. But look at the Gospel of Luke in the same parallel passage. For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. So same exact passage. It's just the kingdom of God is used interchangeably with the kingdom of heaven to describe the greatness of the Old Testament prophet, John the Baptist. Matthew 13, 11, He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Parallel passage, Mark 4, 11, And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. What about when John the Baptist preached repentance? Mark 1.15, and saying, The time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Well, in Matthew 3.2, he uses the phrase kingdom of heaven. Matthew 3.2, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So obviously, these are being used interchangeably. Look at Matthew 19, 23 through 24. This is about how difficult it is for the rich to enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's not impossible, but it's difficult. Matthew 19, then said Jesus unto his disciples, verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And then Matthew does something interesting here. In his own passage, in the next verse, he interchanges and says, Kingdom of God. He says, and again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Now Luke 18, a parallel to the same exact passage, uses Kingdom of God in both instances. They're not interchanged. It's just Kingdom of God both times. Luke 18, 24, and when Jesus saw that he was sorrowful, he said, how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? Matthew used kingdom of heaven in that passage. For it is easier for a camel to go through the needle's eye than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. So again, 
same exact thing. There is no difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. They all belong to God, the triune God, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It's the kingdom of Christ, the kingdom of God, the Father. It is the same kingdom. Matthew thirteen thirty one. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. Mark 4, same passage. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. So all of these are are the same exact. I'll just give you a few more just to drive in the point. Matthew 13, 24, another parable he put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Mark 4, 26, and he said, So is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground. Same exact parable. Matthew 13, 33, another parable he spake, spake he unto them. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. But the gospel of Luke, Luke also uses the kingdom of God every single time. He's consistent about that. Luke 13, 20 through 21. And again, he said, whereunto shall I liken the kingdom of God. It is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. So the fact that every New Testament writer uses the phrase the kingdom of God in all of these passages, but only Matthew uses kingdom of heaven should be your first major clue or red flag about the dispensationalist false teaching. I mean, dispensationalists get every, almost everything wrong. It's a false teaching, a false theology. Don't listen to that garbage. You see, we have to be like little children to understand, to enter into the kingdom of God, into the kingdom of heaven. You know, dispensationalists, what they do is they overcomplicate something that's intended to be very simple to understand. Okay, they take the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, you know, they say there's seven gospels. I mean, they have so many crazy doctrines that this is one of the greatest heresies of our time. Matthew 18, 3 says and said, this is Jesus, and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. But what does Mark 10, 14 say? But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Okay, nonsense. Just forget about dispensationalism. It's false teaching. It overcomplicates the simplicity of the gospel. There's one gospel, one way to be saved. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God are interchangeably used all over the place. There's even more verses on it. You can look it up, you know, but it's the same exact thing. Stop falling for these philosophical heresies that are overcomplicating the simplicity of Christ.